organized crime and terrorism are both hot button issues. Not only are they high on the policy agendas of most developed countries, they have become a part of popular culture. But they are not fiction. They can also be real threats to free societies. And despite their fundamental differences, they have much in common. We will look at terrorism through the lens of criminology. In doing so, it seeks to compare two types of illicit activity, terrorism and conventional organized crime. It is surprising yet understandable that the explicit comparison of crime, especially organized crime and terrorism has received relatively little scholarly attention. It is surprising because as we shall see, terrorism and crime are similar in some respects as are terrorists and criminals. In this chapter, we will define terrorism and organized crime, explore the degree of overlap of the two, understand the terrorism in northeast states of India and know where organized crime is heading towards. Terrorism and crime definitions. The terms crime and terrorism mean different things to different people. In the history of humankind, crime is a relatively modern concept. In prehistoric times, people killed each other and stole others' properties. If the victim or victims were strong enough, they responded in a retaliatory manner. Over time, practices of dispute resolution developed, enabling aggrieved parties to seek restitution. Rules of behavior were unwritten and what we now refer to as social control was informal. With the passage of time and the corresponding evolution of societies, rules of behavior became more formal. And also, it was that specific acts were prohibited by law and those who engaged in them became liable to punishment. The sociologist Richard Quinney, 1970, observed that what is deemed to be crime is not frozen in time or place. He is not the first to have done so. Edwin H. Sutherland, for example, made a similar assertion. Crime is a social and political construct. In other words, crime authoritatively and officially defined will vary from time to time and place to place, depending on social and political circumstances. One might suggest that some behavior, at least in modern times, is universally deemed to be criminal, homicide for example. But jurisdictions make exceptions in order to excuse homicides occurring in certain circumstances such as self-defense. And some governments authorize themselves to engage in homicide, as in the execution of criminals. Others condone extrajudicial execution by state authorities. This practice is common in India and the euphemism used there to refer to deliberate police killings is Encounters, Belo 2009. Organized crime. Organized crime is a term that has been and continues to be used very loosely. There are literally scores of definitions of organized crime. Some definitions are based on organizational goals such as profit. Other focus on the properties of organizations such as persistence and durability. Some refer to structure that is centrally controlled formal structure but as we will see the nature of organizational life is changing and the criminal organizations that thrived a half a century ago bear little resemblance to those that are active today. Other definitions emphasize methods or tools used by organized criminals to achieve their ends, such as violence or bribery. Others still focus on what some criminal organizations do, such as drug trafficking and loan sharking. We shall refer to organized crime as criminal activity by groups of three or more individuals who engage in criminal activities collaboratively with a degree of structure and coordination. 
Terrorism. Terrorism can be defined as follows. An act or threat of violence to create fear and or complaint behavior in a victim or wider audience for the purpose of achieving political ends. A number of terrorist groups in various locations around the globe have been active since the turn of the century. Most prominent among these are the various Islamic fundamentalist groups such as the Taliban in Afghanistan and Pakistan, Al-Qaeda in the Middle East, Lashkar-e-Toiba in Pakistan, Jama Islamia in Indonesia, and Abu Saif in Philippines. Until their demise in 2009, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam LTT sought independence from Sri Lanka. In Europe, the Irish Republican Army and its offshoots have been less active since the 9 by 11 attacks created a hostile environment for political violence in Western democracies. Of course, terrorism existed long before September 11, 2011. In fact, the very term terrorism emerged in the aftermath of the French Revolution to refer to the repressive practices of the state. The Soviet Union during the Stalin era 1922 to 1953 and Germany under Hitler 1933 to 1945 were terrorist states. State terrorism can also occur across national frontiers. The 1983 bombing of visiting South Korean officials in Rangoon was the work of North Korean government agents. Libyan government operatives were responsible for the bombing of an airliner over Lockerbie, Scotland in 1988. Most, if not all, acts of terrorism entail some type of crime. An act or threat of violence is an assault, an offense at common law. Such acts that inflict loss of life are, of course, homicides. Malicious damage to property, regardless of motive, is a crime almost anywhere. Crime Terror Interface The Crime Terror Interface is not new, but it has certainly received a lot of attention lately. The term narco-terrorism was coined as far back as the 1980s to describe some of the tactics of Latin American drug cartels. Some controversy surrounds the issue of convergence. Whether those terrorists who take on criminal trades for purposes of terrorism, either to commit the terrorist act or support themselves from day to day, actually become criminals and vice versa. These are two schools of thought in this debate. One involving Stern, McCann Co. 2004, and Dishman 2005 argues that convergence does exist and can remain permanent. The other involving Stimid and Hutchinson and O'Malley argue that terrorism and crime are very different in their motivations and that therefore convergence is at best very infrequent. To the extent that interaction takes place, it is simply an alliance of convenience. The intersection of crime and terrorism may take the following forms. Terrorists may engage in conventional criminality to support themselves and their operations. Al-Qaeda has engaged in credit card fraud, Abu Saif in ransom kidnapping. Profits from cigarette smuggling in the United States have gone to Hezbollah. Organized criminals may seek to coerce and intimidate governments and their citizens for political ends. The assassination of Sicilian investigating judges Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino in 1992 were more than just mafia hits. The massive explosions themselves constituted a political statement and were obviously intended to discourage further investigate activity. Ordinary criminals may become increasingly politicized and eventually convert to terrorism. Jos Padilla, a US citizen convicted after 9 bar 11 of aiding terrorists, was, in his youth, a member of Chicago's street gang. 
Mohamed Boiri, the assassin of Dutch filmmaker Theo van Gogh, was a petty criminal before he turned to political violence in 2004. Terrorists may abandon their political agendas and turn to conventional crime. Rosenthal 2008 One of the largest bank robberies in UK history was allegedly committed to finance the retirement of IRA activists in 2004 following the peace accords in Northern Ireland. Terrorists and criminal organizations may engage in both terrorist and criminal activity. The Indian Organized Crime Syndicate D Company is alleged to have been involving in drug trafficking, money laundering and a bombing in Mumbai that killed 257 people in 1993. Terrorism in Northeast States of India The Northeast States and India are also not less staggering in terrorism than in other parts of the country and outside. Immediately after independence, insurgency commenced in Nagaland and gradually spread to other areas. On 22nd March 1956, the Naga National Council proclaimed the independent Naga federal government under the leadership of FISO and insurgency commenced in organized manner. With the signing of the Shillong Accord in November 1975, Nagaland is a comparatively quiet state and in elections held in November 1982, the INC has been returned to power. But a group of Naga rebels is still in neighboring Burma and has plans to start fresh incursion at an opportune time. On March 1, 1966, it was the turn of Mizo National Front lead by Lal Denga to raise the banner of revolt against the government and started a revolt almost on the Nagaland pattern. The trouble in Manipur was signaled by Miti insurgency in June 1978 under the leadership of Biseswar and the People's Liberation Army and a little later by the People's Revolutionary Party of Kangle Park, a Marxist-Leninist organization under the leadership Tula Chandra. The Tripura tribals revolted in June 1980 against the use of political power caused by an influx of Bengalis from Bangladesh, which reduced them to a minority as well as subjecting them to Bengali economic domination, which led to the alienation of their land. They are being deprived of jobs and exploited in trade. The Tripuri Upajati Juba Samiti, formed in 1967, has been agitating for restoration of tribal land, the deportation of foreigners and the creation of an autonomous district council for tribals. Tripura poses the most serious problem of ethnic harmony in the region. Assam, the senior partner and a base of the Indian National Congress up to 1977, came under the grip of an agitation led by All Assam Students' Union and All Assam Ganga Sangram Parishad over the foreign national issue in 1979, an agitation which has national unity. The democratic process, which was virtually suspended, was restored with election to the State Assembly in February 1983. But it has generated divisive forces in the state on a scale that surpasses even these at the time of partition of Assam in 1947. The 1983 election in Assam saw the bloodiest election in India's electoral history. With the separation of Nagaland, Meghalaya, Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh, the state's area shrunk from 2,23,590 square kilometer to 78,523 square kilometer while the population increased in geometrical proportion, thereby disturbing the favorable land-man ratio and generating social tension. Moreover, the mounting unemployment and inclusion of lakhs of foreigners in the voters' list has become a red flag to a bully. By 1971, Assam found itself burdened with as many as 4,13,029 immigrants, posing a serious security risk and threatening the change, the demographic profile of this frontier state.
that the 4,13,029 immigrants would remain a permanent liability of Assam became apparent when the union government signed an agreement with the Bangladesh government. Anyone having entered Assam prior to 25th March 1971 would not be accepted by Bangladesh. Attack on Jammu and Kashmir Assembly on October 1st, 2001 and on Parliament House, New Delhi, the symbols of power on 13th December 2001 by Islamic terrorists was to demoralize a nation. The attack being not worked toward fulfillment of their aim, they changed the strategy to attack religious symbols. The sinister plan being the provoke, which might be the reason for the attack on the Swami Narayan Temple to rock Gujarat again after the horrified fallout of Godhra. The inter-service intelligence of Pakistan is known to have been behind the series of bombing cases all over India during the last several years. The same agency also supported those who organized the serial bombing in Mumbai in 1993, killing more than 500 people. The hijacking of the Indian Airlines Flight 814 from Nepal was another case of terrorist activity committed by the same group from across the border. The problem of terrorism and the problem of combating is not new to India. India has been fighting terrorism for more than a decade. But the enormity of the crime committed in New York has made the whole world share the concern. Terrorism and organized crime, where is it heading? It would be nice to have a clear picture of the magnitude and scope of organized crime and terrorism comprehensive data that would enable rigorous comparison over time and across jurisdictions. However, given the definitional and conceptual problems, complete statistics on organized crime and terrorism remains an elusive goal. Sovereign states enact their own criminal legislation, specifying what acts as criminal and differentiating them from those acts that are legal. These specifications often focus on the act rather than the motive or social circumstances of the criminal. An armed robbery in an armed robbery, whether it is the work of a gang of professional robbers, a lone individual or terrorists seeking to finance a forthcoming operation. For a variety of reasons, many acts of crime and even of terrorism never reach official attention. When a crime involves the provision of illicit goods and services, there may not be a tangible proximate victim. In the case of some crimes, such as exhaustion, the victim may be silenced by the actual or perceived threat of retaliation. Many retail merchants pay off their protectors and suffer in silence. Some crimes are so skillfully executed that even the victim is unaware of the situation. Charitable contribution fraud can leave the victim with a warm feeling of well-being rather than a sense of being defrauded. Offenses such as conspiracy may never be detected, especially if the ultimate crime is abandoned before it is executed. In some cases, the organizational circumstances of the criminal may not be apparent. Sophisticated investigation may be able to attribute a particular incident of motor vehicle theft to a specific criminal organization but not all investigators are only sent. Lee Harvard Oswald, the assassin of John F. Kennedy, was himself soon killed soon after by Jack Ruby. Conventional wisdom and the findings of a presidential commission held that Oswald and Ruby each acted alone. But a great deal of circumstantial evidence suggests that both may have been involved with various criminal associates. Kaiser 2008. Many acts of organized are violations of conventional criminal law and thus counted as ordinary offenses. The context or the ends of the crime in question may be unapparent or disregarded. The sheer diversity of organized crime also inhibits comprehensive quantification. Extortion, piracy, both on the high seas and in cyberspace 
people smuggling, the manufacture and distribution of illicit drugs, and numerous other offences may occur across borders or in international waters. Statistics on terrorism are usually produced by agencies of government, who often have a stake in the perceived need for their services or in the public's perception of the quality of their service delivery. There are thus many institutional factors with vested interests in amplifying or in muting the magnitude of terrorist or organized criminal activity. They may also reflect certain national priorities. The US Department of State, for example, is less attentive to terrorist activity seen as not impacting on US interests than to those acts of terrorism which do. It is not possible to say that globally or often even within one's own country, there was more organized criminal activity last year than there is this year. What we do have is a mosaic comprised of few clear images, others quite blurred and some missing altogether. The United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime publishes an annual world drug report containing estimates and trends in production, trafficking and consumption in various illicit drug markets, including opium, heroin, cocaine, cannabis. Appended to the report is a statistical section that contains information for selected countries and drug types with regards to drug seizures, seizures of illicit laboratories, wholesale and retail prices, and per capita consumption data. In addition, UNODC has an online database that allows users to access annual totals of seizures for a range of illicit drug types by year for individual countries around the world. The data are collected by means of a questionnaire administered annually to member nations. Unfortunately, many of them fail to provide the data requested. Conclusion Terrorism acquired a new dimension in the recent years throughout the world. Unfortunately, today terrorism has become part of daily events. The headlines of daily newspapers on terrorist attack horrified the minds of citizens and peace-loving people, waves of terrorism may roll over the surface and tempest rage. But deep down, there is the stratum of infinite calmness, infinite peace and infinite bliss. It is unheard of anyone achieved anything worth with bloodlust, but anything can be achieved resorting to the path of universal love and peace. Terrorism has become a chronic problem due to its sustenance throughout the world.